Hey everyone, Eggman here with a, another video, and today we're going to talk about the sixth and final leader from the fifth set of the One Piece card game, which comes out in like a day or two. Uh, it is Don Quixote Rosinante, and we're also going to talk about uh, Don Quixote Doflamingo, the green purple one, just because it did get a lot of new cards from this set as well. So we're going to have example deck lists for both these guys at the end of this video. But also, if you guys appreciate all the videos and coverage and everything else, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. I've been working really hard on it, and uh, we're trying to get to 20K by the end of the year. We're like on track to do that, but just barely, so uh, every subscription helps on, on that side. And also, I did do a dedicated testing stream for Rosinante. It's linked in the description. It's for YouTube members, and I also want to say thank you to all the new members here on YouTube. That also helps me a lot, and uh, just it helps the channel and just me in general. So in general... Thank you guys for all the support. Look forward to more OPO5 content, especially since we have our own tournament next week and we have our first regionals with it next weekend as well. So all of it should be really, really good. So uh, enough of that, though. We're going to jump on into this one. So what does Rosinante do? It is our second green and blue leader. First one was the Sanji, which honestly, the Sanji was pretty weak and generic for, for what it was doing. It only like helps skillless cards, which is not like a great archetype uh, for this game. Like skillless cards generically are, but like having to run a lot of skillless cards for your leader effect was kind of rough for it in general but uh green and blue does have like a good amount of like removal cards i think blue is kind of like a really great support color in, in this game being able to have a lot of removal and a good amount of like generic topping cards which i think is great uh but this one specifically has blocker on a leader which is really unique it also has the end of turn effect. If your hand is uh, at six or less, you get to set this leader as active. So you can attack with it, and then you can block with it on the end of the next turn. And in this game specifically too, like being able to block with your leader uh, is kind of like twofold why the effect is good. It means that if your opponent's trying to get rid of cards on your board, you get like an emergency button where you can Rosinante to try to save it. But also it means that you can force your opponent to attack you, which means you can force them to hit cards at your life, which means you can force them to let you draw cards essentially. So obviously it's a, it's only something you can do like once or twice effectively, but it's, it's a really great effect, especially early game when you want that early hand advantage. So it's a strong effect and I think it's something you can really take advantage of. Uh, and also I do want to mention specifically, I know this card came out last set, but Sugar is so dang good in this leader like you can protect this card very easily it just means like you know you play this card you rest something you have your leader attack into it you restand your leader they play something else sugar gets the rest on it they try to attack with your leader you block with your leader like you just keep getting that value it's difficult for them to get like the max value from their uh their boards and unless they have removal like rob lucci which is going to be around to get rid of your sugars uh it's it's a really obnoxious card that don quixote uh Rosinante can really take advantage of like you run four of this card in this deck 100 percent. it's very very strong anyways uh we got a lot of don quixote doflamingo cards or don quixote pirate cards and honestly like it's it's so sad because there's so many cards that this archetype gets but like over half of them are like forgettable a lot of them just have like this generic like oh we interact with a three cost or four cost only which is just honestly not very great to be like i don't want to be like too absolute about it and i think there are ways to build the deck which we'll see a green purple list with the don quixote pirates archetype but uh a lot of them are just like not very good which is a shame because again there's so many of them but uh these three are, are pretty good i would say like baby number five specifically is like the best one uh it's a jewelry bonnie for the don quixote pirates so you can rest it and you get to look top five for don quixote pirates which means you can find your sugar but also if you go second you can again play this turn two uh pay the one look top five your opponent's going to attack with their leader to try to get rid of it and you block with your leader you get the card draw and you keep your baby around so that's pretty fine uh obviously it works with with uh, Bonnie as well, but like being able to, you know, and we can run both, obviously, which might be one of the deck lists we go over, but uh, it's it's a really good card for for the deck as well. We also have the Resonante two drop blocker that has an opponent's turn. If one of your other rested characters would be KO'd, you can trash this character instead. Uh, so being able to get this protection effect is great too. So uh, it does mean like you kind of have to have this weird thing where you have to have your your cards rested, but having this blocker around and having like an effect. Uh, a, you know, 
restriction like being able to have that extra blocker is great for not only attacks but also for effects so it's fine there and we also have pika which is a four six it doesn't have a counter but has end of your turn for one you get to set this card as active and then once per turn if this character would be ko'd you may instead rest up to one of your other three cost or more characters named pika so i think that's good so you could use like uh you can use pika's effect to rest rosinante instead and then afterwards they try to get rid of pika again you can get rid of the rosinante because it's rested and it's rested as, as long as this is rested so uh, it's it's good. I think Pika is just like an obnoxious card, but specifically the end of turn effect to restand it, meaning that your opponent has to attack into your leader or they can't even pressure this down, means that they're it, they could have a hard time getting rid of this in the first place, which I think is very strong. So, in general, very good card as well, and I think it's going to be seeing a good amount of play uh, for more of like on like a Don Quixote Pirates side. It's a very strong card. Uh, a couple other cards I want to mention uh, that I've tried a little bit. Uh, I've I found like wavering success with it, uh, but of the other cards, they're pretty okay. We have the one drop to Fogger Law. It has activate main. You can trash this character, rest up to one of your opponent's characters, cost three or less. So it's a one cost to get rid of a blocker. So if you need to use more Dawn later that turn, it's really easy to get the rest and then use nine more Dawn available to you. We see this with two cost and three cost, but uh, so the trade off obviously is that you don't get to keep this card around for it, but that generally doesn't really matter. Like there's so many like the the Nekomamushis are like easy like easily being a two K is like impactful, but again just being able to get this cheap removal option for you I think is fine for it there. Uh, we also have Gladius, which I, I wanted to like this card. I've tried to like it very much. It's an uh, activate main. You can rest this character to rest one of your opponent's characters at cost of three or less. So you can play this on your third turn going first. You get to rest one of their three costs and then you get attack with your leader. So that seems fine, but like in theory, but it, it just never really, it, it was fine, but I, I didn't get a lot of value from it. And then we also have a seven drop Don Quixote Do Flamingo where on opponent's attack, you can once per turn for one, rest up to one of your opponent's characters to cost of six or less. So being able to use this effect to like it's, it's great for the specifically the green purple dofi to have that extra dawn available to you very easily but getting that interaction with six or less cards are like easy to do it just means like your opponents so if they have like two battle cards out it's hard to like swing in the correct order one of them's probably going to get hit by this for free and that just means you can attack into it afterwards so it seems all right uh i'm not super sold with it but it's a card that i think you should maybe look at an experiment if you specifically like the green purple dofi as well but there it is there uh and then we also got three new events uh we have whoever wins this war becomes justice which is great uh green has their zero cost event finally so it, you're able to use the effect for it and the trigger it lets you rest an opponent's character the cost of four or less this is this card's honestly really great you're going to see this in a lot of other decks and if people are running like uh like the the small donkey to pirates uh like what archetype uh this is probably getting in like one copy or two uh, Charles Stone is okay. You get to get plus 4k. Then you can discard a card if you did get to, to three of your Dawn is active. Generally, the case is not like you have too many cards in hand. Uh, so you generally, I don't think, will be playing this card. But maybe something finds the, the use for it. The, the triggers, you get to rest something three or less. So it's fine. Uh, it's it's okay, but I think there's just better two cost uh, Don Quixote pirate events as is. And we have the beta bet on uh, Meteora. So plus 3k and then KO up to one of your opponent's arrested characters cost three or less. So this one I think is fine at like a copy or two. It gets like removal effects, which is great. So they could be attacking like with a big three cost and you get to a uh, Meteoria and then get rid of it. Or like if they, just depending on their order, you like you can spend two to get rid of one of their cards on attacking. So when you're playing uh, like Donkey to Doke Flamingo, I think this is fine. In Rosadante, probably, probably not as much. And then uh, two more cards I want to talk about real quick. Uh, first is Birdcage, which is strictly more of a Doflamingo card, but uh, I, I think this card is okay. I've had mixed results with it. It's it's really really neat. It can build like pop two or three cards. Sometimes I guess maximum of five, but uh, I guess actually maximum of ten because it hits your own cards. But uh, it's it's a little bit cheese, especially in a deck that already has like an issue where you have a lot of these cards in hand that aren't very easy to counter with but since we also have like the zero cost event we could see maybe a copy or two of birdcage and in some builds with it i think it's worth testing out and seeing your own thoughts for it in general i would not run more than two but that's kind of my own thoughts and then we also have the eight cost john Quixote and resonante i promise i promise i tried y'all i still can't make this card good it's it's really really tempting uh especially since you know in e-show i've tried it a lot since it's a navy card and a don Quixote pirates but it's just not worth it so don't you know if you if you have a build with it that you really like go for it but 
it just it doesn't really work out in my own experience so sorry about that but uh, we're going to look at our both of our deck lists our resonante list as well as the uh, non-film don quixote do flamingo list we have so let's jump over there all right, and here is my Rosinante build that I've been testing out. Uh, it's it's honestly, I know I know a lot of my builds kind of devolve into this for green, but it's another just defend the eight drop and have success. But I know that the eight drop gets removed by a lot of things right now. It wasn't as much of a menace as it was in set one, but Rosinante has like the unique thing where you could be at a low hand size, but if you have like one or two cards in life, like you want those cards to draw to help you defend your eight drop. But since your leader has blocker, they can try to, you know, they swing a big 10K to try to get rid of your kids, even maybe even bigger. And you have a free leader block with it. It just feels really, really great. So I recommend that. You have to have six or less cards in your hand for it to be active. But you could just also not attack with your leader too and get the effect. So uh, it, it's just great. So we, we do the, the synergy. So obviously like Bonnie and Baby, you want one of these turn one no matter what. It just means you can play it. And then you can find a card and then Rosanon take and block it whenever they try to uh, attack over it. And then we just have a good amount of our Donker Do families and also uh, Supernovas. So like Killer's a blocker, Rosanante True Drops a blocker, which can help have some protection against our useless Captain Kid as well. If they try to get rid of it with an effect, you can use this Rosanante to save it, which is really great. Uh, we have the the uh, the killer. We have the Apu. We also have the three drop Don Quixote Do Flamingo, which is a Don Quixote Pirates card. So uh, being able to use the baby to find it and then play that on the next turn is pretty good. Uh, same with the seven drop Dofi. I played Usopp for a while. If you like Usopp more, play it. But uh, I just played this for the theming of it. Uh, X Drake is really great too. You get to especially since there's so many arrested cards, especially like if you had Sugar out on your th second turn uh, and it's just able to keep being out there and, and having that you know interaction uh x drake being able to get rid of it uh like whatever it, you know it rests with sugar is very good uh and then just our top end of three of the 10 drop don quixote do flamingos and three of the red rocks since it's really good removal so uh this one i felt like was needed for like longer games since we do go into the late game with our our big eight drop but uh if you don't like it you can kind of run more events but again since we don't have a lot of dawn open with this deck in general i, I found like more events than this was kind of cloggy so this is the resonante boat it was pretty fun i hope you guys try it out it's a lot of fun and uh, we also have our, our Doflamingo. So this is with the Doflamingo family uh, aspect of it. And it is pretty obnoxious where you will be in these situations where you have like four or five cars active that all attacked and they, they stay like the Pika on turn two, being able to play it and then attack with it on your third turn and restand it for very cheap is great. You can play Diamante as well and you can do the same thing where it attacks and then it restands for free in this leader, uh, which is great also when Birdcage is around. Uh, we have a good amount of events. I am playing like the one cost Don Quixote family because it does search cards of anything. It can find itself and other events and the Birdcage. So I think that's great and it's you play it on your opponent's turn because it's a counter, which if we, as long as we have like one extra Dawn floating, which is not too terrible to do. Uh, it, it's just like you have to play this card preemptively, not actively, I guess, if that makes sense. But I think it's an okay card. Uh, try it out. If you don't like it, you can change it around, but I do like the card. And then we just have four of the big boy and our, our kind of our 6Ks. So both these being 6Ks are great against a lot of decks. It just means that they have to invest something into trying to get rid of them. And I think that's kind of worth it. So... Uh, in general, and then we just have kind of like the rest of the low end. We have a lot of 2Ks and our, our queen and a uh, good amount of events. We're running 13 events, which maybe is too many. I wouldn't run any more, but I think it's a good spot. So this is this build because I know you guys are going to ask for it. And again, it's really fun. I don't know if it's better than film outright, but it does get some good interactions. And uh, uh, I, I, I like playing the deck too. So anyways, that's going to be my video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, make sure to check out the rest of my videos and my VOD where I tested a lot of Rosinante as well. Be on the lookout for more OPO5 content in the next couple weeks, and I'll catch you all next time.